mysteries have always been a topic of intrigue for thousands of Tibia players. Some are interested in them for the possibility of acquiring a unique item, which perhaps they have hidden there, waiting for an owner for many years. Others are interested in honor or fame that they might acquire if they discover some long-hidden secret. The best example for this type of mystery is the 469 language. Maybe you could learn to read it, and probably, only that is the reward. But what a reward, isn't it? How many secrets will be hidden in those mysterious Hellgate books? But before we go into detail, let's review some of the great mysteries that have always kept Tibian players expectant. In this video, we will only see general concepts of these mysteries. Later, we will talk much more in depth about each of them, and about others that were not included in this video. The first, one of the most famous, especially for those old players who spent hours and months trying to catch the Sword of Fury. Every old school player, or even some newer ones, searched every corner of Rookgard for a clue to be able to obtain the most powerful weapon on the old island. Some walked to both ends of the island to make the sword disappear. But, does the sword really disappear? One of the aspects that every RPG player must adopt is to use the imagination to understand the context in which a quest is developed. Tibia is an excellent game to develop the imagination, since its graphics are not explicit as in other games. Therefore, your mind must work twice as hard, because imagining a context that is not explicit, it's a much greater challenge. In this case, the Sword of Fury, graphically speaking, disappears. But if we use the imagination, we could also interpret that fact as, perhaps, a wave has taken the sword or it has simply fallen into the water. So the question now is, why when walking on certain places, the water takes the sword, or does it just disappear and appear elsewhere? The message only the humble may touch the sword of fury, could it be a clue? Can we be humble in the game? Or does the phrase have a deeper meaning? This fact can only lead to speculation. On the other hand, the NPC of Artar tells that he left his sword there. But is he telling the truth? Has anyone seen Avatar perform any of the feats that he prides himself on? Apparently there is no NPC that tells about his stories or recognizes his great achievements. Let's remember that the heroes were corrupted by evil according to the history we find in Edra. Is Avatar someone reliable to believe his stories? Or is he simply misleading us from the truth? As for the lonely and mysterious locked-up Banshee. An undead woman full of wailing locked in the depths of the desert. Who could she have been before she looked so hideous? Could she have been the lover of some bard who forgot his panpipe in the depths of the desert? It seems a little suspicious to find a panpipe in the depths of the desert, without making any sense with its surroundings. Or actually, the environment of the place does make sense, but maybe it's a difficult task to figure it out. If we explore Tibia a bit, we will also find another mysterious banshee, but locked in the depths of White Flower Temple. Another lonely banshee in a mysterious place. And what about the mysterious queen of the banshees in Ghostland? Don't you seem to perceive a pattern at this point? At least the queen of the banshees is much kinder, probably in the past she was a woman very loved by people, and this is the reason why she agrees to have a little talk with us. This undead woman gives us insight into what really could have happened to her. She speak about someone has enchanted her with a curse and that's why she is in that undead state. Therefore, these mysterious creatures weren't always like this, someone took these women, used them as tools for some malevolent purpose and turned them into what they are today. Who could do such a thing and for what reason? For this topic it should be transcendental to explore the depths of ghost lands, read the monuments written in that strange language and read the history of this place. Surely unveiling these secrets will open doors to many never-before-solved mysteries.
How many of those who are watching this video did not break their heads, or the calculator, trying to decipher the meaning of these numbers? Those who have been playing for years will know that even mathematicians by profession and people skilled in languages have tried to decipher this mysterious language. But sadly, at least officially, no one has ever come up with the answer. Could it be that it is not only mathematics, but a strange mixture of calculations and knowledge in the game? The key to deciphering this language is likely to be found in the game's content. Perhaps there is even a Bone Lord dictionary, just as there is a dictionary of the Deeplings language. Perhaps this is the reward of another mysterious unsolved quest. Although the possibility remains that it is just a complex numerical calculation. But thinking coldly, what is the probability that no one has been able to decipher it, if this is the correct way? On the other hand, a mysterious NPC called Mad Mage, tells us that everything is based on mathematics, and he talk about some strange numbers. Could he be responsible of this numerical language? Maybe some book on the Island of the Kings will give us a clue for this. Or maybe some of the books we found in the Paradox Tower Library are the key to deciphering it. Let's hope that one day the secrets kept by this mysterious and ancient race will be revealed. For the vast majority of players, the biggest mystery in the game. What a strange place, nothing seems to make sense. Random creatures, research papers about very diverse topics. This mystery requires a fully dedicated video, no doubt. But let's introduce ourselves a little in general aspect of this mysterious place. To sum up, the tower seems to be like the game of escape rooms that we find in reality. In which, to advance, we must solve certain puzzles. In this case, for Serpentine Tower, until today, only one of these steps is known, which would be to release the Fire Elemental. Which can be released through the activation of certain secret mechanisms, that result in removing one of the walls that enclose said creature. Then, we can pull the lever that we find here, and we manage to free the Jin, locked in a room in the deepest part of the tower. The Jin is surrounded by lava and various items, even some, which seem unobtainable. But is the Serpentine Tower really a quest or is it just a place to add flavor and mystery to the game? This question has been asked for years, and it can hardly be answered for sure. Sipsoft is very reserved with this type of content, since it is not within their policies to imply whether a place belongs to a quest or not. However, most people have never noticed a small detail, in an article that Sipsoft published a few years ago on its website, about the Serpentine Tower. The article deals with the theories and thoughts of the players regarding the tower, in which you can read the different ways that the players appreciate the tower. But the detail I mentioned, probably no one or very few players saw it. This detail that Sipsoft gives here is pure gold. Serpentine Tower is a confirmed quest. It is the first time, and I think the only time they made it clear, in a somewhat hidden message, but implying that. In reality, the quest exists, and therefore, there is some way to advance in the quest. We can only hope, that perhaps one day, some player can find a way to advance in the most mysterious place in the game. At the moment, only speculation remains. But as the years go by, more people have gained more experience and the advances have been remarkable. There are various theories, some more crazy and others more logical. Tibia is a game that is based on the same story that continues to unfold to this day, and that, probably, in a few more years, will come to an end. At least as a full chapter term. We'll see what a surprise awaits us.